Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of JDM Masters and today we are going to show you around the Tokyo Auto Salon. It is 2020 and this is an awesome event for car enthusiasts, JDM fans, tuning fans. And so this is Daihatsu, uh, which is known to be a uh, more specialist of K cars, which is light cars in Japan. And it's very popular uh, among regular people who just want a compact car. And one of the best selling Daihatsu is actually the commercial high jet mini light truck. And this is really interesting. The display has a little bit of vibes of the Onkyo Zoku style, as I would say, the big and loud uh, stereo guys who appear at Daikoku Futos. This is maybe, you know, a manufacturer's kind of like tongue-in-cheek take on that. So, you know, the huge speakers, it's, it's more like a DJ booth yeah, on so, wheels, you know? Yes, really exactly, interesting. Exactly. What are other interesting cars that Daihatsu has is probably this mini Kopen. Masa, why is there a GR Sport badge on the Daihatsu Kopen? Because now Daihatsu is in the Toyota brand right now. So Toyota team up with Daihatsu oh. and build with the you know, GR brand into Kopen. Right, right. So they also <laughs> put their sports uh, styles yeah. onto the Daihatsu cars. Yeah, really interesting. Trims into Daihatsu, Daihatsu sport cars. No, interesting, interesting. Liking all this carbon fiber with yeah, red this styles. Is like a custom, customized version of Kopen GR. So, like these kind of stuff, I'm some somewhat prototype cars, but it will eventually become a you, know, you know production model, production ready. This is great because yeah. this this looks like it's almost 99% realistic. Yes. It's not a concept. It's not a concept. It's like 99% right. realistic. And that's the big difference between the Tokyo Auto Salon cars and the Tokyo Motor Show cars, right? Yes, absolutely. So this wig it says D Sport. So D Sport is like the Daihatsu sporting brand, like. Maybe it's almost like an auto exit for mouse. Ah, I see, I so see. So they build like these carbon fiber spoilers and like the exhaust and stuff for Daihatsu's, you know, sporty cars. Right. I think a lot of overseas viewers uh, who love JDM cars would love to have some of these, you know, interesting K sports cars. Yes. It's really fun and happy to drive. Yeah. So car manufacturers have now also joined Tokyo Auto Salon and not only just Japanese car manufacturers, Mercedes Benz, as you can see, a uh, very, very popular European car brand. And just like the Tokyo Motor Show, they are showcasing all of their current models and also a couple of aftermarket design models with body kits, but also their race cars. So this is the final year of the R34 GTR generation race cars. So in 2002, R34 was discontinued. So this is the last year that I ran see. at the GGTC. So this had the V6 engine, not the RB26 yes. in line six. This is the only, the, this is like the, so the next generation Z33 race car, but in a GTR shell. So this engine is a BQ30 DETT engine. This engine produces more than 485 horsepower, but in some cases they make more than like 500 horsepower. And then this car has low sleek aero and then compared to the 99 generation R34 GTR race cars, this is more low and it's more modern race car. I see, I see. Interesting. Thanks. So now we're here at the Honda booth and Honda NSX uh, in bright yellow. Looks a bit like the Y56 sunlight yellow from the EK9 and DC2 generation. Uh, so you've got the standard car right here, but more interestingly, behind here is the NSX GT3 spec car, full carbon fiber body. Well, let's have a look at it. Also the same spec for the JGTC car. In fact, this is the JGTC car, the GT3 spec, uh, which customers can buy and race in GT3 category. Uh, it's quite different from this. Uh, looking very impressive with the latest aerodynamics. Uh, you have like a lower, uh, tubular frame chassis and then the uh, the body on over that with um, modern thinking of aerodynamics with little canards and fins everywhere to just get that as much downforce as possible. So what's this interesting dinner table looking like rear wing style? Now previously GT wings were supported from the bottom but uh, of late the GT wing styles are now have the mounting points on top. Now this actually gives it better airflow because what you need in a, in, a, in a GT wing downforce is all the air that goes under the wing. So having a lot, a lot of as much space as possible on the other, it actually increases downforce by 
about 15 to 18 percent. So on display is the latest FK8 Civic Type R. As some of you guys may know, I've got a, a Civic Type. I'm a fan of Honda as well. But um, the latest Civic Type R is actually made and largely designed in the United Kingdom, made in the Swindon factory and the engine's actually made in America. Um, a lot of the engineering maybe was also contributed by Japanese engineers, but it's interesting how the Civic has become quite a global performance car. So let's have a look at some of the other models here. I don't see a lot of aftermarket <laughs> official modifications on this, but maybe the more interesting Honda that uh, many people don't know. So we talked about K cars with the Daihatsu. This is the Honda S660, which is actually the next generation Honda Beat. Mid-engine, compact, rear-wheel drive, and with a really tight chassis. Now the S660 has a three-cylinder turbocharged engine, a six-speed manual, and a very compact and stiff chassis. Really, really fun to drive. Already from the factory, it comes equipped with um, high-spec advanced AD08R tires. And you can imagine that it's just something this light and compact will be really nice to drive on the mountain Toge roads. This is the N1, only available in Japan. It has a similar engine to the, uh, to the Honda S660, but look in here. It's got a six-speed manual transmission. Now, the gear shift is actually, I noticed it's the same as the Honda S2000. But it's really great to see how manufacturers like Toyota and Honda are now trying to revive interest uh, in sports cars again for young people by creating you know, affordable compact cars. And you know, really the K cars of this size is perfect for Japanese narrow roads. The new fit will be released in Japan in February and it's got four distinct spec, four different grades. And this is the Modular X which is shown here. It's a concept development model with more customized interior, for example, uh, red stitching. But let's talk a little bit about the new features of fit number four and keeping in trend with the technologies that were seen on higher end cars it now has lane change uh, the radar systems and uh, anti-crash front mitig front crash mitigation systems all these now in a small package now one feature that's made the honda fit very very popular and distinctive from the first generation is the double sandwich floors and the fuel tank located in the center now why did honda go to all the trouble to do that it's because even for a small compact car, the rear seats are absolutely spacious, as you can see, just sitting here. And I don't think it's much more spacious than fit number three, but seats are actually a bit more comfortable. But one of the features that made fit number one very popular was this feature. You can actually fold up the rear seats, and as you can see, where the fuel tank would be traditionally placed in in other regular cars, it's actually in front of the front seats. So you can put like a big flower pot, big bag or, or whatever, but this is one of the distinctive features of the fit that makes it different from other cars. So I could you know, lie down like this. So basically this e-hybrid e is like similar to no, Nissan's mm -hmm. Note e-Power, which is electric motor drives the wheels. Oh, okay. So, but the difference is it doesn't need to be plugged in yes exactly ah so what's the benefit of this so you only need gasoline to fill it up so there's still an engine so it's basically yeah it's a still it, the engine works at as a generator okay so i understand this because in japan unlike in europe there aren't many uh, facilities or the, the basic infrastructure yeah, yeah. for normal people to have that plug in in their houses yes exactly so this suits their lifestyle a bit more because all you have to do is go to the gasoline station, station yeah. and, and you can have an electric car. Yes. Nice, nice. So we're now at the Mugen booth which is next to the Honda booth and on display here they have some new parts for the FK8 Civic. We have a carbon fiber seat, stiffening dampers for the body rigidity, a carbon fiber bonnet. But what interests me most is this full titanium exhaust system for the Civic Type R FK8 and with a price at 649,000 yen. It's actually more expensive than some used cars that you can buy. And we also have the full carbon fiber rear wing uh, at 10,000 US dollars, which is the price of some used cars. Carbon fiber aero bonnet here at, wow, priced at 11,000 US dollars. So we're now here at TAIN, it's pronounced TAIN, which stands for Technical Innovation. It is a very popular aftermarket suspension makers which started its roots in the early 80s but became very, very popular in the late 90s with the uh, racing driver and also co-owner of TAIN, uh, Fujimoto-san, 
who raised the Corvo WRC. Now, Tain is very well known for their green livery and the uh, really cute um, motif, but they make a large variety of aftermarket suspension from street use, low down, uh, but also to racing suspension, which I would say uh, it's probably the better of their range. But nevertheless, it's very, very popular and you can have a wide range of, uh, of different kits for a wide variety of cars. So just walking around, I've chanced upon a very clean looking A70 Supra and it's done in sparkling, brilliant dark green. Looks like it's been restored on the inside. Interesting mm, monoform bucket seat and a lot of nice wheels. Let's see what's under the bonnet. And it has no engine. Uh, okay, so it's probably an electric car, but really well done with the minimal fittings, uh, four acid cell batteries connected directly to a drivetrain. This is, this is crazy. And this might be manual, you know? It's a manual. It's an electric car manual. Wow. So apparently the, uh, the owner of this car has explained to me that this is actually a sort of like a learning car for, for technical students. So um, at the moment it has like four acid cell batteries and it's connected to a manual transmission. So it's more like an experimental stage for modifications. And of course he said if you put a bigger motor you can have as much power as you want. Now we are at Cusco which is another aftermarket suspension maker and also manufacture a lot of parts and develop suspensions for uh, street use and particularly racing and N1 racing. Now, Cusco is a very popular brand with JDM tuners and they not only have suspension, they have a lot of good um, lower arm bars, uh, strut bars, very famous for that. And let's have a look at the new range of racing coilovers. It's called the Cusco Sport X and this is a serious damper with an external reservoir and um, this kit is spec for um, endurance racing and also N1. And also another popular Cusco product are the LSDs. Now there are not many LSD makers uh, in Japan. Uh, another popular brand is Kaz, but Cusco is very, very popular with especially drifters and for Gymkhana. Now Gymkhana is a sort of like a auto test car park race where you do uh, spin turns 360 degrees and it's really important to have these uh, mechanical locking LSD. So you can see here, um, it's a good chance to explain how a mechanical LSD works. So there are clutch plates which are placed inside and they work by pressing friction. The gears over here determine uh, the lock, whether it's a one-way or a two-way. One-way means it works upon acceleration, a two-way means it works also on deceleration and usually the ones to go for that are a little mile or 1.5 which works half on deceleration. So these kits, um, are, they lock really, really hard but they also need to be rebuilt um, pretty soon. So um, manufacturers like Cusco and Cans, they also sell rebuilt kits. So for those of you who are really serious about water crossing or for doing drifting and, and you should consider um, looking into one of these uh, LSDs. Over there we have uh, stabilizer bars, um, harder bushings for lower arms and also a lot of body bracing parts which we can see over on this side. One of the most important parts of car tuning is not just engine power. You have a lot of engine power, you tune your car for high horsepower but it's also important to, to take care of the handling. So you start at suspension having a good setup with good alignment but also you can go further by improving the body rigidity in the weak parts of the car and Cusco has a really wide range of under chassis bracing for the power brace series and here for example for the uh, the new Supra and the 86 you have all these braces to fix and stiffen the weak parts of the car. Now on a road car this may be a little bit overkill but if you're planning to track your car with um, semi-slick tires or slick tires or in a rally uh, you might want to consider these parts and are really really useful to get that direct road feel. Now we have your Ogura clutch. Now Ogura is a very popular aftermarket clutch maker and in fact a lot of brands, uh, sub brands actually do OEM from Ogura clutches. So let's have a look at why clutches are important as you can see here the flywheel component you have the clutch disc and you have the pressure plate here. So uh, if you have a lot of engine power, it's not useful unless you can accurately 
transfer all of that power into the drivetrain. So this is where a clutch is really a really important component of the car. So for those of you planning to upgrade your car, uh, you might want to look into these ORC three-puck racing clutches. These are quite hard to handle for normal road use because of its really narrow biting point and, and hard uh, spring tension. So for road use, you might want to look at carbon or uh, full form disc types, which can handle a lot of power, but still gives a lot of drive, drivability. This is a new series where they have a sort of hybrid metal clutch that it perhaps is not too aggressive. Here's for the Honda uh, Type R FK8 to handle large amounts of torque. So this value is very important when choosing your clutch. The weight of the clutch is important, especially how much torque the pedal can handle and the maximum amount of torque. So this one's for 450 newton meters of engine torque and this can survive up to 700 newton meters. So you want to choose your clutch accordingly to what you actually need. Not too much, not too little. I'm now sitting in a Bride seat. It's pronounced Bride, not Bride. It's a Japanese seat maker which supports a lot of motorsports, especially it's very popular with drifting. Now I'm sitting on one of the classic Bride seat pattern designs. This is an interesting design because it's a fully carbon Kevlar shell, but it's also able to do reclining. Bride is very popular among uh, overseas uh, fans of JDM and because they have a large variety, it's, an, it's a real Japanese alternative to an, another popular seat maker, uh, Recaro, which is a German brand. We have your seat back protectors, different tuning pads if you're sitting in a bucket seat, all these little accessories uh, that makes your seat fully customizable. A full motorsports type uh, bucket seat with uh, helmet side protectors, so you get into one of these and you're just snug really, really tight. Yeah, I don't have a view of the outside, but this is what is used mainly in, in real racing cars. Now the auto salon is not just about tuned cars, but also many fans of the auto salon come here um, to visit uh, what we call in Japan campaign girls or race queens. A lot of these young ladies are models who are hired by uh, tuning companies and also big manufacturer companies uh, as a brand promoter and also called Image Girl, which is an important part of the, uh, the Japanese uh, auto industry. So we're here at Endless, which is a huge brake component manufacturer for the aftermarket. They do a lot of development in Super GT and in Super TiQ and also supply brakes for uh, racing as well as road use. Uh, they have a wide variety of pads and Endless has always been very popular even from the early 90s and is still a very popular choice for, for tuners who want to keep a true JDM spirit. D Station Endless Super TiQ Mercedes-Benz AMG GT race car. Uh, it's a fully sponsored car by Endless in which they do a lot of development of their brake components on this car. So Endless makes brake components and also their brake calipers are very very popular. Um, here we have their a unique signature new e-slit design which is quite different from the slotted discs uh, that's traditionally used uh, by other brake makers. The design has circular slits with curved uh, e-shape which uh, Endless says it makes uh, better uh, heat excavation and also prolongs the life of the pads. Huge monoform one-piece calipers uh, which are manufactured for strength it's a very popular alternative to brands like Brembo because it, it seems to be a bit lighter as well. Here we have carbon ceramic brakes which are really pricey but if you want top of the range, highest performance brake discs, this is the ones to go for. Priced at about 7,000 US dollars. Um, it's quite a hefty bit. This is for the uh, Porsche 911. Look how thick it is. Now carbon ceramic brakes give very high heat resistance and endurance to braking power but also it takes a long while to heat up. Um, Endless makes all these brake components for the street but also for racing applications. Other little products they have are their own blend of engine oils uh, which are suited for um, high performance engines particularly uh, JDM cars. And over here we have their range of very very popular S Sports for street use, M Sports for a little bit higher but the best-selling product is the MX72, which is a semi-metallic carbon brake, but also suitable for street use. It's kind of the best of both worlds and very popular with, uh, with, with track runners and also uh, toll gate runners. 
So the signature blue color uh, pads, sometimes you can see that on, on tuned cars. If it's blue, it's probably endless. Also, they have uh, suspension components uh, with their own tuning. Obviously, I think it's made by OEM by another manufacturer, but input with endless uh, data and settings taken from motorsports. It's a company that provides an overall chassis solution for tuning. Seems like it's with uh, Fuji Turbo exhaust. So it's interesting to see how Japanese manufacturers are also providing aftermarket solutions for classic European cars, because these cars are actually popular uh, in, in, in Japan. A lot of fans who uh, appreciate and keep these old European cars running, and they want good tuning parts, so you have like contemporary uh, European cars, but with good Japanese aftermarket tuning technology. And this is something great that they also expand not only from JDM, such as the tuning scene in Linking right now. This is NK, one of the biggest OEM manufacturer of wheels uh, for JDM cars. Now, they also do a lot of aftermarket wheels and also racing wheels. Now, NK is a really large company that makes actually wheels for cars like the Civic Type R, the Lancer Evolution, uh, the Supra and lots of other JDM cars. Now, let's have a look at some of their popular models. The a uh, PF005 and a PF07 are modern interpretations of their classic WRC style wheels and we also have PF01s here um, and a new color for the PFM1s. I think this is really nice. Uh, it in integrates kind of modern designs. RCTC here for multi-spoke, good for probably 15 inch. But the wheels that every JDM fan probably uses around the world and it sort of fits every car is the RP F1. Uh, these are extremely affordable and lightweight and they're very well known for high strength but also at affordable cost and I think NK is a choice that you cannot go wrong with if you want uh, reliable and strong and fashionable wheels. Um, because of the motorsports research and also from Paris Dakar and WRC uh, they are favored by a lot of JDM enthusiasts. So now we are here at Brembo, which is perhaps the most famous aftermarket and OEM brake maker. So we have here the GTR kit, six pot caliper, 380 millimeter drill rotor, massive one piece monoform calipers. Now this is something that maybe it's uh, been seen for a while, but Brembo has a new design, which is over here. Now apparently this is their new model, which has the same weight as the all the brake calipers, but has different improved properties for better rigidity and better brake pedal feel. All that research coming from racing, which shows that uh, big manufacturers are still the ones that have a large advancement. A very interesting design you see here, um, quite different from the uh, single overhead uh, caliper piece. You have three pieces right here and very organic looking and interesting design. Let's see, you know, we can see design more on uh, smaller sizes for that we can fit on in smaller cars in the future. Up Garage is a company that sells used good quality car tuning and accessory parts. So let's go check it out. Now this is the Up Garage sponsor, uh, NSX GT3 spec car, which they race in the Super GT. And wow, they seem to have a, a little shop going on here. And this is just exactly how you would see in the up garage shops, which are located all around Japan. So here on display, used parts, exhausts, uh, coilover suspensions, uh, radiators, and lots of different things, air parts, air cleaner parts. Um, you can have these for reasonable prices for lots of different cars. Here we have an 80 Supra, a VAB STI, uh, RX, and an RX-7 STI again. Pretty good price for 80 Supra. 80 Supra, all in PCV for 500 US dollars. Let's check the quality. Not too bad. It's still clean. Um, the shock doesn't appear to have leaks. Maybe might need, might need a rebuild and also new bushings. But you know, you could use, you could get this as a base. It's great that there are shops like this that car enthusiasts can actually buy parts on a budget and get. Uh, their cars tuned up for a very low cost. So we might check out the Up Garage uh, shops, the biggest one in Machida in the next video. Oh, Japonic, look, you got BRs, Rev Limited thing, just like what one you have. Why don't you just get it here? 
So we are now at HKS Kansai Service. Now, actually, the name HKS is missing because of the 10 years ago, they, the Kansai Service has become an independent company from HKS. Mutai san started this company in 1984 and it's been always at the forefront of JDM tuning using mainly HKS tuning parts. And right here, I have a 34 GTR tuned for 2.8 liter stroker kit, VCAM Pro, and lots of different. Uh, classic uh, HKS parts, it produces 620 horsepower, but what's more impressive is the 73 kilograms of torque. That's really, really large, it's almost double the stock one. Here, the R35 has about 620 horsepower, but a more really impressive 90 kilograms of torque. This is from new generation, and the show car has new body kit, and looking very, very impressive. And JDM car tuners always know and love uh, HKS Kansai and it's really great to see that they're still developing cars and parts for uh, for the customers. Now we're looking around at the back here, there's some interesting parts. Uh, we have a carbon fiber shaft for the Skyline GTR series, um, lots of uh, suspension parts, in the upper links, uh, bushings and nicely engineered and finished quality um, suspension chassis bracing. Look at this huge front strut towa bar that would just give a superior rigidity for the Skyline GTR series. Looking back at all Hyper Rev and Option magazines, you'll see how legendary this, this tuning company is and really a mainstay of the Tokyo Auto Salon. It's one of the few surviving ones that are still here today and it's really great to see them still alive. So guys, we're going to wrap up this video on the Auto Salon and this GTR 50 right here, a uh, very special car which we have talked to Justin, the official importer for this car. So it is a GTR, but so much of it is changed. So that's all from us. Until next one, peace out.